Now, Mr. Loudon, you have stated that on the morning of the day your father was murdered, that you and the hands went out to repair a broken fence. How long were you gone? All day. And on that day, did you or the hands see any unauthorized person on your land? Yes, sir. About noon, we, we saw a man on a mule cutting across our range. Is that person in this courtroom now? The defendant, Johnny Mule. And now will you uh, describe for the jury just what you and the hands saw when you returned home that evening? Well, there was some plates on the table. Two people had eaten. Pa, my father, he, he was lying face down on the kitchen floor. And there was a knife stuck in his back. This knife? Yes. Did you or did you not own this knife? Yeah. And uh, did you have it with you the day you went to the Loudon Ranch house? Yeah. Well, why did you go there? To get me some money. That's why you've killed him, wasn't it? No. You even sat at his table and let him feed you first. No, it wasn't me. It was uh, other fella. What I, other fella? I don't know. It was other fella. I could, I could hear Mr. Loudon shouting. What about? I don't know. There was hollering. He stopped when I knocked on the door. And did you see this other man? No. I know there was someone there, though. The, I heard the door slam inside the house. There was two plates on the table. And that's the story you want this jury to believe. Is, um, Johnny Mule your real name? I don't know. That's all I ever was called. Did you or did you not willfully murder David Loudon on the third day of last month for $200 known to be in his possession? And did you reward his generosity with a knife in his back? And didn't you then rob him and panic, leaving the knife behind? And then, did you or not, four days after your arrest, invent this mysterious stranger in an attempt to cover up this foul and inhuman deed? Yes or no, Mr. Murderer? Mr. Mule. Saddle. Good. Hey, do you remember that razor strap they asked for? Yeah, I got it in the other saddle bag with Hansa's shirt and socks in. Well, I never figured that jury would be out for three days. No one did. You know what I can't figure out? How come they just don't let Hansa Candy come home at night instead of keeping them locked up there in a hotel? Well, they just don't want them to discuss the case with any outsider until they bring in a verdict. I guess it makes sense. Have we got everything? Yeah. Joe, once we get into town, I got to get to the bank immediately. You, uh, you take this stuff over to the hotel, and I'll meet you at the courthouse. I still think I've been happy we filled these saddlebags with some of Hop Singh's fried chicken instead of all those clean socks. Where well, are you going to find a size 14 chicken?
Marcy. Oh, hello, Joe. Any news? No, the jury is still out. Joe, Burge is back. When did he get in? Last night, I guess. He rode in with Cleve this morning. Well, it's been almost two years, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. Is he giving you any trouble? No. What was between us is long gone. He knows I'm Mary Ann Cleve. Now he's he's brooding about his father. Well, that's easy enough to understand. Why don't you go and talk to him? Cleve, go. Burge, I'm sorry about your father. I've been hearing that all morning. Why doesn't somebody do something about it? What's taking the jury so long? You know as much about it as I do. Your brother's in there. Why doesn't he do something? First, there's 11 other men in there. What do you, what do you expect us to do? We heard the same thing the jury heard, Joe. Deke Sanders offered five to one that they wouldn't be out ten minutes. No takers. I wouldn't have bet him. If I'd have been around when they brought that killer in, wouldn't be nobody waiting three days to settle it. Verge, I know how you feel, but that's what the law is for, to keep trouble from starting more trouble. I'm talking about the real law. An eye for an eye. I came back because Pa wrote me Cleve and Marcy were fixing to get married. And I come home to this. Cleve, they said it's no verdict. What do you mean? The jury deadlocked. They couldn't agree. They're letting him go? You know the trial, new jury. He'll get off. You see if he don't. Candy. What happened in there? What happened? We voted 11 to 1. Guilty. Five minutes after we got the case. We voted that way for three long days. 11 to 1. Who voted to let him go? Your brother. Hi, little brother. Hi, Virgin. I didn't know you were here. Oh, that's card right. Big man himself. I'm sorry you had to come home under such circumstances. Are you? Why didn't you do something about it when you were locked up in that jury room? Well, Virgil, I'm not sure that Johnny Mule did it. Eleven other men did. Well, I have to answer to my conscience, not theirs. And the law states that guilt must be proven beyond a reasonable doubt, and I don't think it was. And Pa used to call you his friend. I hope you knew what you were doing, Hoss. So did I, Marcy. Let's go. You don't have to shove me none, Sheriff. Oh, the old hop singer's got some of that fried chicken left. Nothing like that hotel food to make a man appreciate home cooking. I guess not. If you two have something to say, I'd like to hear it right out. All right. And I thought the prosecutor had a darn good case against Johnny Mule. What do you think, Paul? Well, much as I hate to think it, what the prosecutor said made a lot of sense. Then you figure I done wrong by voting for an acquittal and locking up the jury, right? Well, it's a free country. Every man to his opinion. But let me tell you this. You two had a front row seat. You saw the show. When it was over, you got up and walked out. Had a beer and forgot about it, but we had to decide whether Johnny Mule was going to live or die or not. What, well, Look, We sat there and we listened to the same evidence that you did. Joe, I listened to that evidence. I listened to it good. Some of it went on this side of the scale, some on that side of the scale. And after I heard the comments the judge had to make, then I had to make a decision. I had to live with it. Look, I just don't understand Joseph. why you. House is right. It's a free country. He's entitled to his opinion. Let's not discuss it any further. Thanks, Paul. Well, 
Now, I'm gonna see if there's any of that chicken left in there, and I got some work to do out in the barn. You work here, or are you just gonna stand around? I was waiting for you to tell me. Thought maybe you got me fired. Now, why would I do a thing like that? Well, we were at each other's throats for three days. That was during the trial. That's all over now. We let 12 other men wrestle that problem. You ever work on these things? Sure. Go over here on the other end of it. I think you're wrong. That's your privilege. I wasn't alone, you know. Ten others agreed with me. That's their privilege. Johnny Mule was in Loudon's house that day, and he admitted that. And Loudon was killed with Johnny Mule's knife. What more do you need? I want some answers. Some answers to some questions like, why did Johnny Mule leave his knife there? He panicked and ran. Oh, ran all three miles, didn't he? Didn't build himself a fire so he'd be easy to find, huh? That crowbait horse of his threw his shoe and came up lane. He ran as far as he could. If I'd just put a knife in a man's back, I'd run more than three miles with or without a horse. You do that. Johnny Mule ain't that bright. Oh. So you hang a man because he ain't bright, huh? Boss, that whole thing about him hearing somebody else allowed his house that day. It sounds exactly like a man who's trying to cover up for him. You just said he wasn't bright, now you're trying to make him clever, huh? You know, you're more than just ordinary stubborn. You can give a hard rock billy goat lessons. You're gonna work or talk? One thing for sure. The next jury will vote to hang Johnny Mule. Maybe. Maybe not. He's gonna have a better lawyer this time, and maybe I can find some of the answers to those questions I want. Look, Candy, I won't mind you hanging on the salt, Candy. If you get tired, just yell. Don't drag your feet. I'll let you rest. Thank you kindly. But if anyone uh, yells for mercy, it ain't gonna be me. Seen the killer right up to the house. I saw a man on a horse. People shortcut across the range all the time, Virg. You know that? He didn't know he was going to put a knife into Pa's back so he couldn't stop it. All right. But you could have done something after. What are you talking about? What happened to you when they brought Pa's killer in? What stopped you from taking him then and there? Stop me? What stopped me, Virg? The law! food on the table, you two haven't had a bite to eat. I brought some steak and all the trimmings. Well, you don't have to fix ours. We ain't hungry. You won't eat, but you've got room for that. Why don't you run along back home? Cleve and I got some hard talking to do. Do you want me to leave? You better go, Marcy. But I'm one of the family. Well, I'm going to be. That's no way to start a marriage. Secrets all over the place. Look, Marcy, the times you move pretty quickly, boy. I wasn't more than over the hill before you were cozying up to her. That's not true. You and I never meant that much to each other. Oh. I seem to remember hearing you say we did. 
Anyway, that don't matter now. As soon as this is over, I'm selling my half of the ranch and getting out. You can't. Paul's will says you can't sell unless I do, and I'm not about to. Well, now. Seems Marcy ain't the only thing you stole. Now stop that! Stop that, both of you! You ought to be ashamed. Your father just buried, and you two fighting like dogs over a bone. Yes, sir, tell you, boy, you can move real quick when you want to. When I come to that desert rat the night, Pa, you don't do nothing about it. The law stopped you. How's Cartwright's kind of law? Well, it ain't gonna stop me. I'll tell you why. Because one way or another, I'm gonna see that Johnny Mule laying dead at my feet, just like you've seen Pa laying at yours right here. There's still one man left in this family. It wasn't Cleve's fault Hoss Cartwright deadlocked that jury. If Cleve had done what he ought to have done, there wouldn't even have been a trial. But, uh, we're gonna fix that, ain't we, Cleve? Right now. No. No, don't do it, Cleve. Go home, Marcy. No. I said go home. arguing about. All I heard was Mr. Loudon uh, hollering and such. He stopped when I stepped up on the porch and knocked on the door. Now, Johnny, let me get this straight. You say you heard Dave Loudon yelling, and you still knocked on the door. Well, sure, I had to let him know I was there, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, sure you did, Johnny. Now, after Dave let you in, what'd you see? Well, I seed old Dave... Uh, his face was all red like the waddles on a turkey gobbler. He was... Hey, Hoss, did, did you know that there's wild turkeys again in the brush up on Backbreak Ridge? Uh, some old homesteader feller just moved out and let his whole flock there to go wild. Hey. You and me, we ought to go get us a couple of them. They's mighty good eating. Yeah, yeah, Johnny. We will later, but right now we got some other things to tend to. Now, after Dave let you in... What else did you see? Well, there was a table and, uh, and chairs and a door. You know, the, the door what goes to the bedroom was, it was tight closed. Yeah. Now, that table, did you notice anything special about the table? You mean, was they eaten? Like I said in court. Look, Hoss, you... You don't have to go sneaking up on things. You you want to know something from Johnny Mule, you just dashed him. Yeah, well, fine, John. I, I know that. Sometimes it's better if you can remember all by yourself. I can't cipher numbers, and, and I never learned how to read. And, and I, I got to sign my name with a mark, but, but there's one thing that Johnny Mule can do, and that's remember what he sees. Good. And, Johnny, what was on that table? There was a company tablecloth with little red and white squares. Uh, there was company dishes uh, and bread and butter and a big pitcher of milk and baked beans. It was fresh bread. There was two plates. One of them was almost full, and one was about empty. First time he never asked me to, to step in and, and set. <laughs> he just give me the three dollars and close the door. Yeah. Now, John, let me get this straight. You went out there to sell Dave your knife for three dollars so you'd have money for food, right? Yeah. First time he never asked me to step in and set a while. <sighs> Johnny... I could sure uh, use some of them beans. How'd you know Dave would buy the knife? 
He seen me cleaning a trout with it one time. Uh, he said to me, any old time you want to sell that knife, I'll sure buy it. Uh, he, he said he had one just like it when he was a kid. Did you tell your lawyer that? He never asked me. Doggone it. You should have told him, Johnny. See, everybody thought you were lying. If they'd have known why Dave wanted that knife, they might have believed you. Could have made a big difference. This here next trial, you going to be on the jury? No, no, Johnny, I can't. But I'll guarantee you this. You're going to have a better lawyer. Uh, you're the only one that knows I didn't kill Mr. Loudon. You gotta be on my jury. Johnny, it's it's impossible. If you ain't, they're gonna hang me. Anybody with you, Marcy? No, I'm alone. What are you doing out this time of night? Virgie Cleave are going to try to kill Johnny Mule. Well, I can believe Virgie would try a fool thing like that, but Cleve's too level-headed. He's been acting different since Virgie came back. I tried to talk to him, but he wouldn't listen to me. He sent me away. I had to come and tell you. I don't want Cleve getting killed trying to do something that the next jury is going to do anyway. Well, you did the right thing. You won't hurt them, will you? Marcy, I don't want to hurt anybody. Now, the best thing you can do is keep them boys away from this jail. They wouldn't listen to me. Marcy, there's another deputy playing poker over in the Silver Dollar. Tell him I need him and a couple of volunteers to stand shotgun. solitary cell for your own protection. No, I'd sooner stay right here, Sheriff. You must have heard what the lady said. Mounted men could gun down on you from out there. Move! I can't go in there. Johnny, I'm not asking you. Come on, oh, move! No. Come, Come on, on, please! Come I can't, on. can't go in that dark place. Johnny. Shots. How's the sheriff? He's alive. If that's what you mean. Doc says he'll be a while getting on his feet. And uh, no trace of Johnny Mule? We didn't find any. We got a couple of dozen men out there tracking. It's just too dark to find him. We'll get him in the morning. You heard about Johnny Mule? Yeah, how did it happen? Split the sheriff's skull and rode out. First paw, now the sheriff. That's what Hoss Cartwright's turned loose on us. Look, we'll find him tomorrow. The next jury will vote to hang him. If he lives to stand trial.
whiskey. Same. Johnny Mule busted out of jail last night and practically killed the sheriff doing it. Busted out? The deputy's foreman of posse asked me to come to get you three. Be right with you. How'd it happen? The sheriff was switching Mule to the solitary cell and Mule jumped him. Why the switch? Marcy told the sheriff that the Loudons were coming in to take care of Mule themselves. Cleave to? Yes, cleave to. What do you expect after what you did to that jury? Well, I shouldn't expect Johnny Mule to break out of jail. That's for sure. All right, all right. How the posse split up? Three groups. The one forming at Lassiter's is going to uh, sweep through the Red Hill country. What about the others? The deputy uh, is heading for the foothills. The rest are starting out with the lake. Who's group are you with? Red Hill country. Uh, either the Loudons with you? I'm not sure. Joe, you head for the foothills. Right. Now, I'll, uh, I'll join the lake group. Hoss, you better go with Candy. Right. Candy. Yeah. I'll saddle up and catch you later. Right. trees. I got knocked off my horse. I fell down in amongst the rocks. Well, what are you doing here, anyhow? I didn't know no other place to go. You was the only one, Hoss. The only one. Believe me. Johnny. Johnny. Again, you know that, don't you? Why? Well, Johnny, you're, you're a fugitive. You're still wanted for killing a man. You know I didn't do that. Oh, Johnny, I don't know that you didn't. I, I'm just not convinced that you did. There is a difference, you understand? But them others, they, they wanted to hang me. Well, it, it ain't up to them now. It's a new jury that's got to decide it. And what you did to the sheriff didn't do your case no good, neither. Oh, he, he wanted to put me in that dark little place, huh? But, Johnny, it was for your own good to keep Cleve and Verge from trying to kill you. Oh, I ain't never been locked up, Hoss. I, I don't like them bars. I don't like walls. He could have gone from here. The lake, or 
We'll pass the creek into the hills. Won't be hard to find out. The creek bed's muddy. Bound to be tracked. Don't take no chances. Come on, Gabe. Okay, give the horses a breather. You hear something? No. Well, you've been sniffing back there ever since you met us. Hoss was supposed to have joined us. He should have been here half an hour ago. Well, the warrant for him ain't none of us that have to be here. There's nothing I can do, Johnny. Well, just help me to get away. I promise you, I'll never come back no more. Johnny, th there's laws. I ain't got no choice. I go back. I got to stand trial again. Yeah. And them folks say, they say I did it. They hang me. It's a law, Johnny. For that next jury, they vote to kill me. And you don't have to feel nothing, because it ain't your doing no more. Uh, I th thanks for what you already done for me. Johnny, where are you going? Well, if I'm going to get hanged for, for something I didn't do, they ain't going to shoot me like no animal in a cage or something hanged up for skinning. Look. I want to help you. But now we're going to have to do it the right way. Now, if you'll promise to stay right here and let me go in and talk to the sheriff about a change of venue. I don't even know what that means. Johnny, all it means is that we'll take you to another town where you'll have a better chance for a fair trial. It's the only chance you got, Johnny. There must be a hundred men out there looking for you. A hundred men. Looking for Johnny Mew. I wonder how many ever looked for... Who was hiding in Loudon's house the day he got killed? Johnny. The sheriff looked. He couldn't have looked very hard. Johnny, everybody makes mistakes. This sheriff is one of the finest fellows I ever knew, Johnny. And if you'll promise me to stay here while I go in and talk, it's just promise me that. I can't. Johnny, you're going to stay if I have to tie you to a post. I can't go back. They ain't going to lock me in that little iron box. I can't. Johnny. I can't go back to Hoss. No, I don't want to hurt you, none. Look, you get over against that stall there and put your put your hands up. Johnny. I didn't want to hurt you not. Whole day gone. Three posses riding since dawn. They haven't brought him in yet. Stay put, Tom. Sit down. Look, if you really want to help, you can saddle my horse. I gotta know what's going on before dark. The doc said you'd stay put and get plenty of rest, or you're gonna be in worse shape than you're already in. Oh, so I should be out there. Yeah. It'd take two men to haul you back in after you fell out of your saddle. Tom, there's plenty out looking for Johnny Mule now. Yeah, sure. Including the Loudons. Hoss, it's my job to keep Mule alive until a jury decides different. Tom, the Loudons ain't likely to find him. And neither is anybody else for a while yet, anyhow. You sound awful sure. The posse's only got a couple hours of daylight left. And they're looking a long ways from the right place. Well, where is he? Oh, so I'm not asking you as a friend. I'm asking you as an officer of the law. Well, I'd like to... I'd like to do a little talking first, if I could, Tom. You're aiding and abetting a fugitive, Hoss. Now, I want to know where you got him hid. Well, I can't recall just offhand, and I don't think I'm going to until we get a couple of things straightened out. You're not only breaking a law, you're asking me to help. 
Yes, I am. I've heard Loudon is talking lynch and murder. Now, if he can't find Johnny Mule, ain't no way you can put that on, is there? So, in a way, I'm sort of doing you a favor, ain't I, Tom? Uh, no matter what you say, Hoss. I can't break the law I've sworn to uphold. <laughs> All right, then, bend it a little. Till I can get a good lawyer to change the venue over to Carson City. We can get some guards that you can trust to get him there alive. You really believe he's innocent, don't you? I don't know. All I know is that I got me a bunch of that stuff that you lawmen call reasonable doubt. Even after what he did to me and you? Oh, Tommy is trying to save his life. That don't make him guilty of murder. Well, no, but it don't prove him innocent either. Wait a minute. Now, what was done in regards to checking out his story about that strange fella or whoever it was out at the Loudons? Well, you heard me in, in the trial. He never even mentioned another man till he was sitting in that cell for four days. You heard my story about the knife, too, didn't you? Well, that'll come up in the retrial. If we can get him back for a retrial. Still Creek. No sign of fresh tracks. Well, we'll head west and keep going as long as there's light enough to see by. Here you are, Tom. Maybe it'll make you feel a little better. No, but we will. Before Virgin and Cleve kill him, or after he kills one of them. Oh, Marcy. Johnny Mule doesn't want to kill anybody. Well, you're the only one in the world who thinks that. Marcy, you're not doing yourself any good hanging around here. You ought to be home in bed. Wait here. Where's the doc? In his office, I guess. Why? The doc's in his office. Where have you been? I've been busy. Well, you sure voted right, buddy. We flushed Johnny Mule out of the rocks behind Loudons. He shot Verge. He slipped us before we could ring him. Is Verge dead? I don't know. Even if the doc gets there in time, I wouldn't hope too high. The rocks back of Loudons. You know he was hiding there and you wouldn't tell me. He wasn't hiding there, Sheriff. Are you sure it was Johnny Mule? Of course I'm sure it was Johnny Mule. You saw him? It was dark. We were fanned out. Verge must have ridden right over top of it. Johnny Mule fired three rifle shots, hit Verge twice. Huh. So none of you actually saw him, did you? We didn't have to. Well, who did you think it was, Mr. Cartwright? That mysterious stranger again? The one that nobody ever sees? It's your fault. If you hadn't protected that murderer, Verge would never have gotten shot. Mercy. Bridge is hurt bad. All the more reason he needs a nurse. Don't tell me you were fool enough to hide him. Well, I, I don't know about the fool part, but I knew where he was, yeah. And I didn't tell nobody, no. Well, if you don't cooperate this time, I'm going to put you under arrest for harboring a known fugitive. Tom, give me no daylight. I'll bring him back to you, I promise you. I give him my word. Yeah, if you're lucky, he's probably halfway to Arizona by now. I'm gonna go check, see if they found the dog. I gotta get out to the loudness. Tom. You're not going in the place. Sheep, you're in here. Tell you must drink that coffee. Better?
That's my pony, Mr. Cartwright. What are you doing here? Same thing you're doing. Looking for Johnny Mule. Well, you heard Candy say that they'd flushed him up there at the Loudons. Yeah, I heard that. I heard you, too. Now, he can't be in two places at once. So where is he? Well, you mean that uh, you believe me instead of Candy? I asked you a question. You'd better answer me. Well, I'd like to know what you're doing here instead of at the Loudons. Because I'm chasing a killer. Oh. Most women that I know had a brother-in-law shot and maybe dying. And be there by his side, offering all the help and comfort they could. It'll give a lot of people comfort. I get my sights on Johnny Mule. You, uh, you're a good shot, huh, Marcy? Good enough. You know, when something's troubling me, I don't like to get rid of it until I can get all the facts kind of straightened out in my mind. That's why I voted not guilty at the trial. There were just too many questions unanswered. Never mind the speeches. Just tell me where I can find Johnny Mule. Furge was shot with a rifle. Johnny ain't even got one. Those fool questions will be the death of you. Hey, kind of rough, isn't you, Marcy? Hmm. Your folks being dead and losing the ranch and all that. Don't worry about me. I'll do all right. Hell. Yeah. You were telling around that you and Verge are going to get married. That is, until he ran out on you. And now it's you and Cleve. But of course, you knew that Cleve would just be a hired hand until his pa died. Marcy, you say you're good with a rifle. How good are you with a knife? You really had it figured out nice for yourself, didn't you? Mr. Loudon dead. Johnny Mule blamed for it. You had Cleve and that whole ranch all yourself. You know, real nice until Verge rode back, right? You took long enough. I want to make sure I heard everything. Did you? Yeah, yeah, enough to make me want to cut my throat. Pops! I was sleeping out in the bushes. I, I heard a shot. Yeah, she wanted to see me dead, Johnny. Why? Well, I reckon I was asking too many questions. What do you mean? Well, I mean, Johnny, that she wanted a ranch and a husband bad enough she put a knife in an old man and was going to let you hang for it. Three days I kept voting to hang you. I guess I decided you were guilty the first time I looked at you. Well, I never in my life even judged a horse on first sight. I was ready to judge a man that way. I'm never going to do that again. That's the last we'll be seeing of Johnny Mew, huh? How come he didn't want to come work for us? Oh, I offered him a job, but he thought he'd be better out by himself. He told Cleve the same thing. Uh, Candy? What's your mail? Oh, thank you. Go by the Loudon place? Yeah, Doc's got birds sitting out in the sun already. He'll be riding round up in a month. Good. 
He's a lucky man, considering how bad gut shot he was. Hey, you know, maybe I ought to ride over there a couple of days a week and help him out while he's healing. That's a good idea. Is it all right, Pa? Sure. Hey, good enough. Boss? Yeah. I got a message for you from the yeah. sheriff. He's sending out a posse to bring you in. So 11 men and a uh, prosecuting attorney can buy you the biggest dinner in Virginia City. <laughs> hey, reckon we can get this wagon fixed before they get here? Bring that wheel over. Well, Hoss, I just realized why you've never been found guilty. Anymore. What's that? Because the jury was afraid to ask the condemned man what he wanted for his last meal. <laughs> <laughs> have a few words together. I certainly, Mr. Endicott, I see no reason why we shouldn't. Oh, uh, Mrs. Wright suggests that we use her study. I've wanted to meet you for a long time. A happy circumstance that we are both invited to be Mrs. Wright's guests in her home when you and your sons were in San Francisco. <laughs> I have the distinct feeling that you might have arranged for those invitations. <laughs> yes, well, to business. You uh, are aware that I own certain parcels of land in Nevada. Mr. Endicott, I'm aware that you own half of the northern part of the state of Nevada. I like Nevada, Mr. Cartwright. It's young, vital, growing. I want to help with that growth, which means taking an active part in the politics of the state. I want to ask your full and active support for an old friend of yours. For what office? Governor. And your candidate? John Faraday, your friend. Mr. Endicott, our present governor has served this state capably and honestly. And he wishes to remain in office. And he has my full support. Faraday is counting on you. I've known John for a long time. And I admired him. Until he became your tame judge. My... Tame judge. Didn't you pay for all his campaign expenses when he ran for office in Virginia City two years ago? John Faraday's been a good judge, and you cannot say otherwise. Yes, it's true. But so far, he hasn't had to rule on the legality of any of your land transactions. That's when he begins to earn his keep, isn't that so? Be careful how you slander me, Cartwright. Well, I don't consider it slander to say that a a man like you wants a governor who will come running whenever you whistle and do exactly what you tell him to. Mr. Endicott, you have a reputation for corrupting everything you touch. Now you want to control a governor so you can corrupt this state. You're not going to do either. I promise you that. Is this a declaration of war, Cartwright? Unless you stay out of Nevada politics. Fighting me can be a very unhealthy pursuit. A number of men could confirm that, except that they are no longer with us. Are you threatening me? 
make of it what you will. But don't get in my way. I talked with Mr. Endicott. I uh, thought you might have something to tell me. No, John, I, uh, I haven't had anything to tell you. Mr. Endicott possibly has. Judge Faraday. Yes. Mr. Endicott would like to talk to you. Right away. I'll uh, see you back in Virginia City. Good night, gentlemen. Judge. Paul, what was that all about, anyhow? Sam Endicott is increasing his investments in Nevada. Mm -hmm. Property or people? Both, Joseph. Both. I thought you said Ben Cartwright was a friend of yours. Well, he is a friend of mine. I thought he was. He will not support you. Did he say why? Ben Cartwright has ambitions of his own. He wants to sit in the governor's chair. But he's never held an elective or appointive office. He wants to be governor. He asked for my support. I turned him down. He's too arrogant, too self-seeking, not the right man at all. I never thought of him in that way, but yes, sir. With Cartwright against you, it'll be a tougher race, but uh, you'll win. On your way out, Ask Mr. Broom to come in. Of course. Thank you, Mr. Endicott. If I do win, I'll do everything in my power to be the kind of governor... And never mind. Save the speeches for the campaign. <laughs> Mr. Endicott wants to see you. We've got a fight on our hands. Cartwright is tougher and better informed than I thought he could be. It's an error in judgment, Broom. And Faraday, is he still in the bag? He'll do as he's told as long as he can convince himself that it is for the common good. But that's only half of our problem. Cartwright is going to search for ammunition with which to fight us. If he digs deeply enough, he might discover our plans for the development company. If he does, we'll buy him off. Not a chance. Ben Cartwright is a highly moral man. Well, that kind comes a little more expensive. We'll make him a partner. <laughs> he wouldn't listen to that for one minute. There's only one answer. Not so fast. The nominating committee meets in Carson City in 20 days. Without Cartwright's support, Faraday couldn't be nominated for dog catcher. If Cartwright endorses Faraday... No contest. Faraday wins going away. But then Cartwright isn't going to change his mind. So we can't win without Cartwright's endorsement. That means we will get Cartwright's endorsement one way or the other, dead or alive. As I said, there's only one answer. You will leave in the morning for Carson City. The hotel? Cattleman's Hotel. You rent the biggest suite. Hire whomever you need. You start this campaign with the biggest fanfarade possible. Done it many times before. Do you, uh, have a man to take care of, uh... I'll get one. Hey, throw my 
bag down, will you, friend? Oh, much obliged, old timer. Anytime you're in the market for Hastings hardware, best of the West by test, you remember old Welburn White. Drummer par excellence. I can read your unspoken thoughts, Mr. Broom. You're thinking that I don't look like somebody you'd hire to kill a man. You don't look like a man I'd hire to hold a horse. <laughs> One of my greatest assets, sir. You just think about it for a minute and you'll see that I'm right. You know something? I never go anywhere without these catalogs. They're my passport. Take me anywhere I want to go, no questions asked. See, I sell hardware. That's my cover. The hardware I sell is very real. I'll sell you one two-penny nail, 40 horse collars, or a hundred gross of axes. Now, I carry another little book. But I only show the special people, like yourself. Go ahead, open it up. Prominent Denver attorney found dead. No clues. I'm gonna turn the page. Oh, now that's a good one. Wyoming mourns unsolved murder of state's attorney. <laughs> and you know something? He never went anywhere without a bodyguard. Here's your advance. That's $500. Well, now, that's right as rain. Plus another $2,000 payment upon delivery, as you might call it. Time is of the essence. You mean hit quick and get out of the state fast? Quick. I'm not slipshod. The, um... customer is Ben Cartwright of the Ponderosa. Now, you pick him big, mister. Not too big for you, Mr. White? No, sir. They all fall down when they're hit by a 44. Ben Cartwright. I have to have a whole new chapter just for him in my little book. I'll leave on the first stage for Virginia City. Oh, come on, relax, Mr. Broom. I guarantee satisfaction. <laughs> As of right now, Mr. Ben Cartwright is as good as dead. Come in. Spare a few moments? doesn't reconvene for another 10 minutes. Part of a judge's obligation to be available to the public. Thank you. Sit down. John, I, uh, I'd like to discuss your candidacy. Yes, I thought that would be the subject of your visit. Well, I... Ben, would it help if I assured you that I did or said nothing to influence Mr. Endicott's choice of a candidate? I didn't come here to pass judgment on you. Well, then sir. why did you come, Ben? Certainly not to offer me your congratulations or your backing. Uh, no, wait. I don't blame you. If I were in your shoes, I'd probably feel the same way. You must have had your heart set on that nomination. And then to be turned down by the man who could help you most, well... Believe me, I can understand your disappointment. Wait a minute, Judge. I don't resent your candidacy. It's your backing that concerns me. And I think it should concern you too, John. And let's get a couple of things straight. I never sought the nomination. But if I did, Endicott would be the last man in the world I'd ever turn to for help. Well, if that's your story, Ben, I won't argue. If you want to save face, that's your business. 
Only don't expect me to go along with it. All right, John. That's what you want to believe. Let's talk about the governorship. And you. And Endicott. Why is he backing you? Because he's my friend. And he knows I'll do everything I can to be a good governor. John, I'm going to lay it right on the line. What's in it for him? Oh, I see through you now, Ben Cartwright. You'd like to get at Endicott through me. Well, it won't work. Endicott is an honest man. Who just happens to want to pay all your campaign expenses. Now, if you have a quarrel with Endicott, that's personal. I have nothing to do with that. But don't impugn his honesty or mine. Court convenes in two minutes. Was there anything else on your mind, Mr. Cartwright? No, I guess not. The worst part of all this is you believe everything you said. people to listen to us. The problem is, what do we tell them? You tell them the truth. Endicott's trying to steal the state of Nevada. What do we say when they ask for proof? What would you do? Just tell them what you think, Paul. I mean, people around here have been taking your word for things for a long time. You're a delegate to the convention. You get a chance to talk then. Oh, yes. I plan to do that. But as you said, Endicott's a smart man, and he'll be ready and waiting. He'll tell the convention just what he told Judge Faraday that I'd try to get him to back me, and uh, he turned me down. And then what? You just uh, sense the nomination of Judge Faraday, don't you? Two weeks before the convention starts, huh? Well, I'll try to talk to as many delegates as I can. Hope that I can convince them. I'm late for a call, is it? Evening. Mr. Cartwright? Well, yeah, I'm one of them. What can I do for you? Well, my card, sir. Wilburn White, Hastings Hardware. Satisfaction guaranteed. It's a hardware salesman, pal. Well, have the gentleman come in. Right this way, sir. Much obliged. Ah, you must be Mr. Ben Cartwright. That's right, I am. Wilburn White, at your service, sir. Uh, you're a hardware salesman? Yes, Hastings. The best in the West by test. Well, I hope you didn't come out from town just to see us. Well, you're the last of four ranches in this area. Because if you had, you've uh, made a trip for nothing. You see, we've been buying our hardware from a dealer in Virginia City for some years now. And, well, actually, there's no reason to change. Oh, well, that's the fortunes of war, as you might say. Hey, you stick around for a cup of coffee? Oh, much obliged, but I think I'll get back into town. You know, a city man like me gets mighty nervous at night out here in the wide open spaces. <laughs> Well, it was good meeting all of you. You know, it's not very often you get a chance to meet somebody as important as Ben Cartwright. No, sir. Uh, good, night, good night, sir. Good night there, young fella. Cheerful cuz, ain't he? Why shouldn't he be? He got nothing on his mind but hardware. You said something I had on my mind. Well, I'd better get some rest. I've got a lot of talking to do in the next couple of weeks. Good night, Paul. Good night.
probably some men who might want to see me dead. There's only one I can think of right now. Endicott. With that... That night, San Francisco, Mrs. Wright's. He threatened me with murder. I thought I was bluffing. Well, from what I hear about Endicott, he's capable of anything. Yeah, what about bushwhacking when he risk a hanging? All kinds of men you can hire to do some bushwhacking for you. Well, so how do we prove it? Don't get in my way. Those are the last words he said to me. Don't get in my way. I got in his way. I got in the way. The thing he wanted most. Friday's nomination. No, we can't let him get away with it. Yes, we can, Joe. We can and we will. Oh, it's that, uh, that bushwhacker. He wouldn't have any way of knowing whether I was dead or not, would he? Oh, no, I don't. I don't reckon there's any way he could. Yeah. All right, then. One of you will go into Virginia City. And you'll announce my death. What are you talking about your death? What for? Now, that Dr. Wilson. He's a, he's a man that'll help us in our kind of fight, I think. Talk to him first. We're going to fix Endicott once and for all. <laughs> I get used to reading my own obituaries. Well, all this fills me with a great deal of respect. I had no idea I was such a wonderful person. Paul, you don't suppose them fellas might be stretching a little? <laughs> I'm sure they were, but I sure hate to play this kind of cruel trick on some very fine people. Well, as soon as they find out why you're doing it, they'll forgive you. I hope so. Me. Hey. It's just Candy with another batch of mail. How is he? He's oh, he's fine. He ate a bigger lunch than Hoss. He does more complaining than any corpse I've ever been around. I wish you fellas would stop talking about me as if I weren't here. Sorry about that. There's a lot of excitement in town. They found the bushwhacker. They did? Coffee thinks so. It's a man named Briggs. Briggs? I don't know anyone named Briggs. Well, that figures. A hired gun Endicott brought in to kill you. He may be a hired gun, but he looks more like a saddle tramp. His uh, horse had a nick in one of his shoes. Sheriff Coffee found hoof prints to match it near the barn. And there was a rifle cartridge there, too. Was well, he confessed? Not yet, but he had $200 in his pocket. He admits not having worked for three months, but he... Uh, Claims he won in a poker game. Well, it should be easy enough to prove if it's true. No, not so easy. It was a two-handed poker game in a hotel room. No witnesses, and the loser left town. Convenient. Sheriff Covey's convinced he has the right man, so is the uh, prosecutor. Trial starts tomorrow. Tomorrow? Sort of pushing things, ain't they? Well, Mr. Cartwright was a very important man. Town's in an ugly mood. They've got a rope... The gallows, and they're looking for somebody to hang. Well, that sure changes things. Well, that convention starts in five days, anyhow. There ain't no way they can finish that trial up by then. I wouldn't count on that.
so sorry you have to leave. So now we have female delegates. Some of the delegates have wives and sisters. Some of the men have lady friends. That happened to be one of mine. What else have you accomplished? I've spent a lot of your money. Where I had to, I promised state house help. And where I could, I, uh, I bought the votes. We have votes enough? Almost. And the uh, Cartwright? $2,500. I uh, also had to buy you a forger. That was another 750 I didn't know that they were that expensive. I always find it wiser to pay what they ask. Otherwise, they might sign your name to a check. Aren't you going to invite me in, mister? What are you doing here? According to our agreement, you were supposed to get out of the state and stay out. Mm -hmm. That was until I found out who I was working for. You're working for me. Not unless your name is Samuel Carter Endicott. It's all right, Broom. Perhaps this gentleman would like to discuss matters further with me. Well, if you're Samuel Carter Endicott. I am. I'll handle this, Broom. You took a chance coming here. No moon tonight. I left my horse three streets down, came up the back stairway. Nobody saw me. Most commendable, Mr... Uh... White. Welburn White. I take it that we are indebted to you for all the evidence leading to the arrest of the cowhand Briggs. Oh, well, you take it right, mister. I stole his horse from the livery stable and used it right out to the Ponderosa. And you know something? I played two-handed poker with him in my hotel room, and I lost $200 to him. A stroke of genius. And now you feel that you are entitled to more than the stipulated sum. I agree, Mr. White. Uh, Mr. Broom is inclined to watch the purse strings over carefully. How much more would you think is fair? One thousand? Two? Well, now, the way I look at it, mister, this ought to be worth, oh, let's say ten thousand a year minimum. A year, did you say? Are you saying that you expect an annual honorarium? Well, a man as important as you. I have a lot of people on your payroll. But I don't imagine you got anybody with my, uh, <laughs> particular talent. <laughs> Touche, Mr. White. I admire your business acumen. You, uh, obviously have, uh, I've studied the pros and cons, weighed them carefully, and you have decided that I cannot afford to turn you down. Well, that's about the size of it, yes. So you have rightly come here, without anyone seeing you, to make sure that I make sure that you don't talk. And it would be churlish of me to disappoint you. <laughs> find his horse and get rid of it. As to our friend there, he will fit very nicely into the steamer trunk which you will ship to San Francisco and load aboard one of our vessels bound for the Orient. Fortunately, that poor devil Briggs will pay for Mr. White's crime.
I never seen a man convicted so quick on circumstantial evidence before. Well, this town's in an ugly mood. You saw they were looking at the jury. If they'd have found him innocent, they probably would have tarred and feathered him. Or worse. Just can't imagine them hanging him so quick. Tomorrow, I've never seen it set so fast. Well, I'm no authority on hangings, but uh, I don't know what else Judge Faraday could have done. If he'd have kept that man in jail any longer, they'd have burned down the jail on him in it. And the convention starts tomorrow. Well, I'm going to get back to the ranch and give Pa the news. Right. I'll see you later. I sure didn't think they'd rush through that trial so quickly. All we needed was one more day. <laughs> one day. And what do we do now? The governor. He could stop the hanging. Yeah. Yes, he would. I'd have to show myself to him. And Endicott would now. One whole day before I want him to. The only thing I've got going for me is the surprise of showing up at the right time. Convention opens tomorrow morning. What time? Ten o'clock. What time is the hanging scheduled for? Ten in the morning. Well, we'll ride into town tonight after dark and get Judge Faraday to issue a stay of execution. He's in the cut, man. What other choice do we have? I thought you were a ghost when you walked in. I thank God you're alive. So do I. But the rest. Ben, your accusations are wild. Totally without foundation. Well, I'll say it again. Sam Endicott hired an assassin to kill me. All right. I believe there was an assassin. But I don't believe Sam Endicott hired him. Well, who else would want to see my father dead? I think your father will admit he might have other enemies than Endicott. But who else would want me dead now, at this particular time, just before the convention? It's conjecture, supposition. Ben, can you prove any of these things in court? Not at this time. Well, then your accusations are pure slander. Mr. Endicott can sue you for everything you own and win. I know that. But given time, I think I can force Mr. Endicott to expose himself. I'll never believe Endicott had anything to do with it. Well, if Pa didn't believe it, why do you suppose he pretended to be dead? To get even with Endicott. For what? for backing me as a candidate in place of him. Uh, I told you before, I'm not a candidate now, and I never have been. Endicott said you came and asked him for his support. You've known my father a long time, Judge Faraday. Have you ever known him to lie? All right, Endicott exaggerated. John. We've been friends. Haven't you wondered why I refused to back you? You made it quite clear you thought I'd be bad for the state. No. No, not you. Endicott. If you're elected, you'll be in his debt. And then one day he'll ask you for a small favor for one of his friends. Oh, nothing important, just a matter of executive prerogative. The next favor will be for him. Only it'll be bigger, and the one after that'll be bigger again, and then you won't be able to stop him or stop yourself. Get out! Get out and leave me alone. Are you going to force me to show my hand now? Now, John, do you really think that I would use my own attempted murder in self-interest? 
you really believe that I could play this kind of trick on all my friends? If I'm wrong, if Sam Endicott is innocent, by tomorrow night I'll be the laughing stock of Nevada, and you'll be governor. But suppose I'm right. Just suppose I'm right. I came here tonight to show myself to you, to save Briggs from hanging. But if Endicott finds out about this, he'll announce to the world that I'm alive and guilty of the worst, the dirtiest political hoax ever pulled in this state. If you issue that stay of execution now, without giving any reasons, you'll give me time to prove to you, to everybody, that Endicott is everything I've said he is. If I'm wrong, you win. If I'm right, you lose. But you'll have done the state a great service. This is the biggest decision of your life, John. from Tonopah. I used to work for him. According to him, Joe, it's all but over. The um, floor vote's going to be only a formality. Faraday. That's what the man says. That's what I heard. Well, maybe there's something you haven't heard your name bearing a cart, right? Endicott and Broom are talking to key delegates in the hotel, helping to make up their minds. Yeah, I heard that too. How are you? How's the wife and the new dog? Jim? Oh, yes. Is there any cut like to talk to you now? Fine. Do you think? Jim Porter owns the Bar M Ranch. Wife named Mary, daughter Penelope. Oh, Mr. Porter. Jim, how's the wife? No, don't, don't tell me. I'll remember. Mary. Oh, it beats me how you do it. We only had an opportunity to say howdy, and that was six, seven months ago. Well, a man likes to remember his friends. Only yesterday, I was talking about you to our next governor, John Faraday. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, he likes you very much. Now, what's your pleasure? Oh, whatever you have, just a short one. I'm complimented you picked me. I had to pick someone I could trust, Senator. I only wish I could be of more help. I believe everything you told me, but not all the delegates know you as well as I do. And I can't prove a word of it. You know, the man who controls the key delegates is going to win this battle. Gentlemen, delegates. Your friend and mine, the Honorable Samuel Endicott, would like to say a few words. Thank you, gentlemen. In a few minutes, the convention will convene. And the serious business of nominating our next governor will begin. Before that happens, I want to read to you a very important letter from a very important man. The late Ben Cartwright was my friend. Mr. 
Senator, I think it's about time you got down there. Thanks. Be right, Kyle. Well? Good luck. I now speak for Ben Cartwright. I read to you from a letter that he wrote me the day before an assassin's bullet ended his life. I can think of no man better fitted to govern Nevada than our mutual friend, Judge John Faraday. Gentlemen, Ben Cartwright never wrote any such letter. Very much alive, Mr. Endicott. I have never written a letter to Sam Endicott. I never put any recommendations on paper. I'm afraid Mr. Endicott has lied to you. He is not my friend. He is not your friend. He is certainly not the friend of the state of Nevada. I told him I would not support Judge Faraday. And when I further told him that I would support none of his nominations, he hired that assassin to kill me. I'd like to see that letter. Of course. This isn't even a good forgery. This is not my signature. Now, gentlemen, Ben Cartwright could or could not have hired the unfortunate man who was hanged at Virginia City this morning to play the role of assassin. But the blame for that poor wretch's death must be forever on the conscience of Ben Cartwright. A human sacrifice for political gain. Gentlemen, there was no hanging in Virginia City this morning. That man in jail is alive. And the stay of execution was ordered by Judge Faraday himself. And now, gentlemen, the moment of decision. On the one hand, a governor who has served us honorably and well, and who deserves our continued support. On the other hand, a puppet, controlled by Mr. Endicott and Mr. Broom, two scoundrels who have corrupted everything they've ever touched. And it will stop at nothing, not even murder, to get what they want. The future course of our state the future course of the state of Nevada will be decided today in this room. Now, gentlemen, you can let Endicott and Broom loot and destroy our state. Or you can stop them in their tracks. Your vote is the only weapon you need. <laughs> Hold up, Ben. I'll be proud to walk on the convention floor with you. Come on. Well, Ben, how does it feel to win on the first ballot? I'm glad the governor was renominated. Faraday, sending that telegram, withdrawing his name from the convention sure helped a lot. How do I feel? I'm glad it's all over. Faraday had a lot more integrity than I gave him credit for. Shame it took a man like Endicott to bring it out. Well, uh, friend Endicott's finally given up the ghost.
The hardware salesman. Candy, get the sheriff. <laughs> 